And I'm so happy to be joined in the studio today at uh, coming up to seven minutes to four by Lindy Morrison. Hello. Hi, Jemima. <laughs> um, we've just been talking about how hot it's been and how we've been having swims. And uh, I was thinking that the music that Cleopatra Wong made was very, I suppose, chill and very relaxed and had all those interesting samples and stuff. It would have been really interesting to see what progressed. Now that you've got a, some time to play music again, because we've had COVID and, you know, all things have been changing for us, have you thought about going back into doing more of your own songs? Because you're playing with Rob at the moment. Well, I have to say that I, with the Cleopatra Wong project, yeah. which was Amanda Brown and I post the go-betweens, uh, we both had babies at the time, which qu- kind of caused a... Uh, a stop to that project. Um, it really was Amanda who wrote, and I was attempting to write, and I honestly didn't write well. And she w- r- writes particularly well. She's a beautiful songwriter, and she's moved into composing for film and television. And um, I would have never continued writing, I think, because. I do think you have to have a real skill to do it, but I think you have to be very driven. And I'm much more driven to play drums. I have always been driven to play drums. And it's, um, you know, since uh, my daughter left home and I stopped working in the various roles that I held in the industry, uh, I have had to really work very hard on my playing uh, and I've, I've enjoyed it, but I, I mean, every day doing some hours of work and, um, you know, playing in lots of gigs and doing all sorts of lots of projects. So I don't think I could have ever managed both. Although I do know drummers who do that, you know, people like Rob Hurst, a woman in Sydney called Bree Van Ryke. Um, but it wasn't for me to, to write. So the answer to your question, after a long um, long, long response is no. I would not ever consider writing. But you're happy playing. Oh yeah. I oh god, it's all consuming. Mm. It 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 totally is. I I um I, I rent a studio space and I probably get there three days a week and and do a couple of hours non-stop. And other days I work with uh, other people on stuff. For instance, I've been. I don't know if you remember a, a, a band called The Laughing Clowns. Okay, so The Laughing Clowns was Ed Cooper's band after The Saints. So his drummer was Jeffrey Wagner and we meet weekly and work on stuff together. We've been talking about um, trying to get a 45-minute show together on drums, but um, it's tricky. Uh, we'll see how we go. Uh, I, yeah, so I, I, I've kept very busy um keeping fit and trying to improve my chops on drums. You see, it seems amazing to me as a, a non-drummer because when I see, obviously on YouTube, there's, there's you know plenty of material of you playing now and then. And obviously to maintain that level, you do have to practice. But for me as a, a, a consumer, I think what you're doing is phenomenal. <laughs> already um you played last night the first of your three gigs here in Perth um and how did that go I heard oh. I heard from Sarah that people would ju- jumped up and joined you was that something had been planned or uh yes so we had uh we had planned um for half the set to because ha- half the set's just Rob and I and then the other half of the set we got uh, a man called Nigel come up came up and played bass and it guy called John on flugelhorn and um, Kathleen, a singer, a local singer, who, who's really the most beautiful voice. Uh, and um, Greg Deer came up on um, our guitar. And uh, I, it's so that's to uh, um, enhance the performance. And we do that everywhere we play. We get local musicians to join us for about half the set. And uh, it's just really fantastic because the community music community in these places always knows these people and for them they they're incredibly chuffed to see their mates their musical mates get up on stage and play and for me I've played with a whole large diverse group of bass players 
um, doing this. And it's so interesting how different it is every time. Uh, it's really made me very aware of the power of the bass and and its capacity to uh, to play with drums. Mm. Uh, of course, like these people don't get to rehearse, but then I don't get to rehearse with Rob either because Rob's in Melbourne and I'm in Sydney. So I rehearse to um, his records. We, we do regularly play with um, Graham... Evil Lee, who was in the Triffids, uh, he was on he's on pedal steel, and uh, a, a, another guitarist called Shane O'Mara, who played with Paul Kelly for years, uh, co-produced a number of Paul Kelly albums. Uh, so they, they're our kind of regular guys that we play with. But um, when you're coming across to Perth, it's very expensive, uh, so you can't bring your whole show, or even going up to Brisbane. Uh, so we are very careful to. Um, make sure that we can make it profitable in some way to tour. But also the the value of being able to work with others and you never know there might be an extra spark that then you can go and revisit or... I mean, Absolutely, has... like um, hearing the, uh, the, the uh, flugelhorn last night and it, it was so beautiful and uh, it, you know, it really sweeps you away. And uh, he also... Uh, um, it, it, he sits. Uh, I was talking to him after, and how he how he plays behind the beat, and uh, I'm playing on the beat, and how I couldn't at times listen to him because if I did, the s- song was <laughs> likely to slow down, <laughs> you know, to a a, a tortoise crawl. <laughs> and so will it be the same group of people tonight and yes, on Sunday? Yes, and, and, and on Sunday. Yeah, same group. So, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I hope the listeners who are coming to see the show will see, will see what I'm saying, hear what I'm saying. Well, I think tonight's sold out. Yeah, yeah. But there's maybe Sunday people can squeeze in. I imagine it's at the Fremantle Arts Centre and I teach in a school next to the Arts Centre. So I imagine that the school wall will be full of people. Because they might not fit everybody in. Do you think uh, it'll be outside? Yes, it oh, is. Oh, good. That'll be lovely. Yeah, it's yeah. a beautiful space. And I know there's a lot of people down Freer Way who are looking forward to, to seeing you guys. So you've known each other for a long time, but not worked together? Uh, Rob and I? Yeah. Um, so uh, Rob, Rob knows exactly when we met because there's a, a review of um, the band playing in Perth in 1983 uh, and Chad's tree was supporting us, and um, I, I I do remember them, but he thinks that I don't. Uh, so <laughs> over the years, I've been very aware, of course, with the Chad's tree and then the Black Eyed Susans and so on. But he he tells the story on stage about how we ended up playing together. So I'm not going to re- no, repeat fine. the story now. Um, but uh, it was probably about eighteen months ago now. So it it is uh, yeah. It's a, it's a funny story, but it's a, it's really been great for me because he's such a beautiful songwriter, mm. such a melodic singer, and, um, you know, a, lo- a lot of sad ballads in there. And so you've had a, an acquaintanceship or a friendship, would you say, since 1983? Um, well, it's hard often to define the relationships you have with other musicians I'd say now we're very good friends because we always stay in Airbnbs together. So we've lived together. We we talk about our, our, our bowel habits. <laughs> but that's actually a rare find to have someone that you can share you can share work and home space with. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Well, he's incredibly easy to live with, and we give each other a lot of space and are very considerate. Of course, you know, as you get older, you're much more considerate of, of, of people. So he's definitely become a friend. But as I was saying, music, musical acquaintances, you know, I, I have lots of, lots and lots of musical acquaintances. That's people I've shared backstage rooms with or vans with. or And, it, you know, it, it is a, it's a fine line between friendship and, and just being collegiate. Uh, but there is a difference. There's an absolute difference. I mean, I think, you know, I'm part of a collective here in Drastic on Plastic with very diverse women who are all quite fierce 
and quite feisty and, and very interesting. And there's some of us who kind of clash sometimes, but then when we put shows together, the music that we have and the conversations that we have are so rich, I wouldn't have it any other way, mm. even though we might get a little bit irritated by each other sometimes. And I think when you talk about relationships with people, you know, as as we exist in this world, the friendships that we make are what sustains us with what work that we do and that's so important and I really have enjoyed as long as well as lots of other women in dressing on plastic uh, hearing about your relationship with Tracy oh, Tracy right. Thorne in my rock and roll friend and it's been such a wonder for all of us to in dressing on plastic to to read it and oh and to have that experience of we too are women in music some of us are musicians some of us play music some of us teach music so just hearing about her take on your experiences and obviously your involvement with the book I mean Sarah was saying you know do people feel like they know you now that they can ask you these kind of personal questions since that they've had the book and and how's it been to be to be the the subject of this that's that's so interesting (laughs) Uh, well to address the last part of the question the subject it actually made me feel terribly uncomfortable. And mm. I, I, initially I hurt Tracy's feelings because people would be putting up on Facebook or Twitter, uh, you know, uh, oh, this is the most brilliant book and everything. And, you know, how do you feel about it, Lindy? And, you know, and I, 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 I do love social media and always respond when asked questions. And I was saying excruciating. You know, <laughs> I'm finding it excruciating. And I, I've never told this story before, but seeing this as a women's program, I, 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 I can really share it. And Tracy eventually sent me a very cranky email and just saying, you know, this is what you said at the time after you read the book and quoted me back about, you know, how much I love the book and everything. And then she said, you know, but uh, now you're saying this. And I said, I'm saying that because... I, you know, I live in Australia. I don't want to be big noting myself and saying, oh, this book is fabulous. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, Lindy Morrison's such an interesting person, blah, blah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm doing that. But that was, even that was a bit of a lie because I actually did find the book excruciating. Yeah. I mean, I find it excruciating. And um, uh, so that, that answers that. I, I, I read it once, you know, and, um, um, you know, uh, my bo- my daughter, who's thirty, and she, you know, she said, "Oh, mum, it's vulgar," <laughs> and um, <laughs> and uh, um, so most pe- everybody loves it, right? But isn't mm. it interesting? I only remember the the, the 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 thing, the bad ones. Someone wrote on, and I thought this was pretty good. They said, "Oh, it's salacious," because well, there are some salacious details. You know, there are some uh, details. Of, very personal about mm, sex, mm. Uh, you know, that she got from my letters or, or that she, well, I told her in letters, but I gave her permission. I could have withdrawn all that. Mm. Uh, and, and also, you know, a friend saying something about my relationship with Robert. And, yeah, so I just feel like it, it was another person, yeah. you know. I think that's, you, you have to get that detachment. Else, else something like that would never be published and yet it's important for those stories to be told. I think it's so important. It really is. And I think I need to say thank you for all your bravery in sharing those because I agree it would have been excruciating. But at the same time, that's going to make, I think, other people's experiences not less forming, but perhaps it will ease their struggles to know that other people have felt the same way. Oh, well, that's a really, really, <laughs> really positive way to look at it. Well, I think, you know, that's something that we strive to do, isn't it, as humans, is to is to help others and uplift them. You know, when we get to a certain space where we realise that that's where we receive joy is is sharing, you know. Um, we might take a break mm. just for a minute. Um, this is one of my favourite tracks from your loyal friend, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> 